Welcome today to Covenant Keepers Ministries and our video devotional for Monday, January the 14th, 2019. We're going to begin a little study of the Ten Commandments and preface this with a couple of days that we're just going to be talking about um, what these entail for us as we approach these Ten Commandments. We're going to be using Exodus 20 as the basis for this, but I, I want to give a, a big quote today, and I, I see these devotionals as, as a teaching uh, opportunity so that we might be able to encourage any believer or follower of Christ to be encouraged to seek the Lord with all their heart. I also see this as an opportunity for someone who might stray upon this website, ckmweb.org, or see us on YouTube or something, and, and be drawn by the power of God's Word to be moved toward Jesus Christ. So as we take a little time here at Covenant Keepers uh, Ministries to work through the Ten Commandments, you, you may ask this question, why would we talk about the Ten Commandments? And I appreciate that. And I, I would like to answer it <coughs> by, by a commentator, T. Watson. And I think he says it best for you. Now, this is a long quote, so bear with me as I, I walk through this with you. I'm the Lord your God, Exodus 22. And T. Watson says, I, the law requires that we worship God as our creator. The gospel requires that we worship God in and through Christ. God in Christ is propitious. Out of Christ, we may see God's power, justice, holiness. In Christ, we see his mercy displayed. The moral law requires obedience, but gives no strength to fulfill that obedience. As Pharaoh required brick but gave no straw, the gospel gives the strength. Of what use then is the moral law to us? A glass to show us our sins and draw us to Christ. Is the moral law still in force to believers? In some sense, it is abolished to believers. In respect of justification, they are not justified by their obedience to the moral law. Believers are to make great use of the moral law, but they must trust only to Christ's righteousness for justification. As Noah's dove made use of her wings to fly, but trusted to the ark for safety. The moral law is abolished to believers in respect of the malediction of it. They are freed from the cursory and damnatory power of it. How was Christ made a curse for us? as our pledge and surety. Though the moral law be not their savior, yet it is their guide. Though it be not a covenant of life, yet it is a rule of living. Every Christian is bound to conform to the moral law and write as exactly as he can after this copy. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Though a Christian is none of the condemning power of the law, Yet he's under the commanding power. The commands and prohibitions of the moral law reach the heart. In the commandments, there is a sin and doci. More is intended than is spoken. Where any duty is commanded, there the contrary sin is also forbidden. Where any sin is forbidden in the commandment, the occasion of it is also for forbidden. Where one relation is named in the commandment, there another relation is included. Where greater sins are forbidden, the lesser sins are forbidden. The law of God is copulative. The first and second tables are knit together. Piety to God, equity to our neighbor. These two tables which God has joined together must not be put asunder. God's law require, forbids not only the acting of sin in our own persons, but necessa being necessary to or having a hand in the sins of others. The last rule about the commandment is this, that though we cannot by our own strength fulfill all these commandments, yet doing what we are able, the Lord has provided encouragement for us. And there's a threefold encouragement, that though we have not the ability to obey any one command, yet God hath in the new covenant promised to work that in us which he requires. I will cause you to walk in my statutes. 
The iron hath no power to move, but when the lodestone draws it, it can move. Thou hast also wrought all our works in us. Though we cannot exactly fulfill all the moral law, yet God will, for Christ's sake, mitigate the rigor of the law and accept of something less than he requires. Wherein our personal obedience comes short, God will be pleased to accept us in our surety, and our surety, remember, is in Christ. He has made us accepted in the beloved. End of quote. So I want to say the gist of all this is we must remember that the Ten Commandments are moral law, not the ceremonial or even the social or cultural law that was given to the Jews. Our justification is not in obeying the moral law. Our justification is found in Christ alone. His actions on our behalf satisfy the judgment, wrath, and justice of God. In Christ, we are free from sin's penalty, but our heart has been changed, and we now obey the moral law of God through the power and grace of God at work in us. This is hugely important because as we approach the Ten Commandments, it's important that we remember that God has made provision for our justification in and through the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But as a result of it, we are obeying the moral law of God because something happened inside in our hearts. And so we walk out what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. So we approach these Ten Commandments. We're talking about things we, we are under the command of, but in one sense they've been abolished to us because now we have no problem obeying them because it's inside. It's coming from the inside working itself out. Let's pray together. Lord, uh, we, we struggle so many times with balancing in our own minds the justification provided for us through Christ and, and are trying to do so many good works that we might prove to be your children. And we haven't needed to prove it. I pray a help for everyone who listens to this today. We're, we're not proving our salvation in the, so we get justified by our proof. We were justified and then the proof follows. Thank you. Thank you for what you did for me and for all of us through Jesus Christ. We bless you today, Lord, and, and pray that our, our study of these Ten Commandments might enlighten us as well as cause us to draw on the power of God that lies within us by the Holy Spirit. Bless this day for your uses and your glory, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Keep following Jesus and live for his glory.